Flotilla Friday, uh, March 11th, 2022. Doesn't feel like March. <laughs> yep. So in terms of Flotilla updates, is anyone else? I, I have some things I could put on the agenda, but um, yeah, I um, wonder if Eric, there's anything on your mind. <laughs> well, I know that we discussed a few things in the chat um, about zigzag and um, I am not sure I'm still trying to wrap my brains around it and um, if you could see an application for it in Trove or wherever we could talk about it um, yeah I mean I thought I would try something uh, like taking the spreadsheet and organizing it in dimensions, but it's hard to think in those dimensions and it takes time to come up with a good way of organizing it. So I'm uh, doing, I'm back to just looking at my own use cases and uh, testing uh, like with the game of life, something simple I can just experiment with. So, but I'm also exploring um, an app called Cosmic and I could show a little demo of it later if people are interested. Uh, I just got access to it. Um, it's being developed in France by Paul Roney and his team. So, um, yeah, so that's where I am right now. So were, were you able to, it, it's a completely different database structure, right? So it's not something that we could like put into a Google sheet and look at it there. It's just like not compatible. Yeah, I mean, it is, um, <clears throat> what I'm looking at is just a data structure that can represent the data in a zigzag structure. Um, so there's a prototype viewer, the GZZ application for um, yeah, playing around with it, but, um, <clears throat> Yes, it wouldn't be like a Google spreadsheet or any, uh, I mean, it could be a database, but uh, it's would have to be mapped into a database. So um, yeah, go with what you're working on now and see where it takes you. If, if you see a use case where you want to have dimensions and navigating across dimensions, hopping from one cell to related dimensions, then we could think about that. Okay. So yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the things that uh, I think would be cool to do is make a list of the projects that are happening in Flotilla. And um, then once we have that list, maybe Eric, if you want to try putting it in some sort of ZVC structure. Um, but yeah, I was thinking we could, we could continue on, I think we started talking about last week, um, ways to structure projects and pete i know that's something that you're really <laughs> um interested in, in in terms of like the ways that we actually um represent different projects um i was hoping to test out the cataport tool which lets you take a, a database of things in Airtable and then basically sync slash federate it onto trove um yeah curious if that sounds like a cool many tasks for us to work on today um but maybe we can go around and do kind of quick quick check-ins too i think eric would answer your question better than i can bill yeah it really is up to you to define how you want to organize your stuff so like we could have a project dimension a person dimension and these cells will intersect across different dimensions I still am thinking through the right way to use it. <laughs> um, what's um, uh, rather than the kind of the content that you would put in a dimension, how is a dimension? What, what's a dimension in zigzag space? Okay, well, um, the examples. So mathematically, it's 
like a row of connected cells or like an array, but each cell could only have a left or a, and a and or a right neighbor in any one dimension. So like person Eric could have a left neighbor and a right neighbor in the people dimension, but I could have two different neighbors in a, a project dimension. But um, what I find is sometimes you have to make clones of cells on a clone dimension in order to get some of the many to many relationships specified in there. So yeah, I, just, yeah, go ahead. A, a way I think of it, and I'm sure I'm butchering the concept, but um, uh, a dimension, I, I kind of think of things similar to zigzag um, with tags, kind of like uh, hashtags or, or something like that. So then a dimension would be a collection of tags in one, um, or, or you, you could have, I was going to say hierarchy, but that's not the right way to think of it. Uh, you could have people tags, which are separate from place tags. And then you, you could have a, a place tag and a people tag that have the same name, but they wouldn't collide because they're in different dimensions. Yeah, tags can be one way of implementing that meta structure on top of data. Um, I think Ted saw it more like spatial organization. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like he's the, actually the, yeah, the thinks corner. of it as dimensions. Yeah. Like, right. So, like, and, a, is something about like a corner cell that's intersecting two dimensions. And then he has like operations like chugging through like say like a circular list of items until you find the one you want. So he's also thinking in terms of programming spatially, like a function he's, returning. A he's list also of... got a, a sequence. You said the left and right thing. Um, well, tags it, yeah. tags are just a bag, right? Um, yeah, there is a um, there is a, a neg word and pause word direction. So it's a directed graph in a way. Yeah. The, um, the, the navigation system I always wanted for a music player was um, uh, I'm, I'm listening to um, uh, I'm listening to a Blondie album. Um, and so maybe the next song I want is another song on the same album, or maybe the next song is another song by Blondie, or the next song is um, she's doing Rapture. She's singing Rapture. So I want a song that's also pop rap. Right. Um, yeah, if you have those connections in your graph, you can get to those other songs. Yeah. Or other things like Blondie the Brownie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that help, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> You sort of have to yeah, think yeah, this, this, <laughs> this is, a, this is a, I mean, it helps, but it doesn't help. I mean, right? I mean, yeah. Because really, we're in this like uh, multi, I don't know, this complex soup of all kinds of things. So, the idea about organ, once you say you're going to organize your information, it's like, okay, so now you've already, you already have something now in mind that will organize it. You know, like there is, you can't have any data if you don't have a model. Yeah. My other example, if there weren't humans, there wouldn't be temperature, a temperature scale. You know, there just wouldn't be. The only reason that we had temperatures because of, you know, we made them up, built thermometers. So there's something really interesting, but I don't know this. It's it, it's kind of a math mathematically kind of kind of a math primitive more than so the 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 way to figure it out more is to play with one of the the navigators. And, and I don't know that anybody's done an amazing job of like, oh my God, we have to use zigzag here because it solves X, Y, Z problem. We haven't quite got there yet. Eric's trying pretty hard. Yeah, so yeah I guess that's, I don't, no, yeah, I'd like to, well, I, I don't know. You all are gonna be able to 
be more efficient, but I'd like to see, you know, a problem for which problem we have for which this is a solution. It's a decades old question. Yeah, well, then, because then you would actually have a solution and you could determine what, you know, new yeah. problems came along with, Yeah. you know, yeah. Could you build doing a manual it. solution? Like if you had index cards and could you put string between index cards and make your own solution or something like that? Well, I mean, I've sort of done that in the past. It, I had all kinds of weird ways of organizing information when I was using paper. I think what Bill said is, what's the so what's the use case? And if I understand the use case, then I can go, oh, okay, I get it. I get why zigzag is better than. Yeah, I'm still know. trying to figure that out as well. Well, I mean, I just just it's not quite flotilla; it's flotilla adjacent. But this massive wiki fun project, Peter and I are on with the. It's. It's. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> Well, no, the problem is for me is conceptually trying to understand how to, what conceptual model will actually enable us to do, you know, like say easy onboarding and use. Yeah, and I've been experimenting with a wiki at work, trying to see like if I connect several documents, can I easily find what I need for a task and can other people find it? And it's not clear. <laughs> I, my experience, so I told this to Pete a long time ago, but I used to, I was really hot on wikis when they first came out. I did all the stuff and I discovered, I was working at Xerox at the time and I discovered, oh, a wiki is a people sorter, you know, like, like licorice gum. It's a people sorter. You either like it or you don't. <laughs> Same with wikis. It's like, no, my answer is no. I just, you know. So is anybody like evaluating various products out there and comparing them? Or is Wendy yeah, Jack, about that? Jack Park yeah. for, is comparing for, every product out there. Yeah, it's doing an amazing job too. For ZigZag, Eric, or other no, stuff? No, just in general, knowledge organization tools. And here's our leader. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some, I don't know, Eric, are you on Reddit? Um, only occasionally. Yeah, well, there's a whole personal knowledge information thread that's a little quiet now, but was really interesting and active about people just trying all these PKI tools. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was. Is what fits with your brain? It's like Jerry found his brain. I'm trying to find my brain. Uh, Obsidian is really good. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's got a little bit of well it's got very light structure based uh, obsidian is basically a wiki but but enough people have added different different uh add-ons in different ways that you can find you know you can kind of you can kind of make it feel a lot better um if you add a few few plugins here and there it's also very powerful Um, I've got a couple kind of check-in things. Um, one of them, uh, Vincent, I am interested in, well, maybe interested is not the right word. Um, I'm, I'm going to freaking build the, uh, um, the BPD project database. Um, and I'm realizing I want to do a graph database. <laughs> um, uh, and the reason I wanted a graph database was because uh, because I ended up with this weird um, fractal project scale thing where you know um, uh, you have bigger projects and smaller projects and you I don't know the, the the right way to do that is with the graph database. So then the graph database I'm thinking of would actually be Airtable with uh, one table one one thing that's you know the the link the link table. Um, so then the question after that is, uh, I, I know that we've gone through a couple of different ways of visualizing graph data. Um, so I guess I'm interested in that. Um, you know, and actually then the other, the other check-in thing I wanted to do, uh, Wendy, before you got here actually, and so now you can do a better one than I can, but um, 
uh, a couple of us, um, especially the two Wendy's, uh, Wendy McLean and Wendy Alford, have been getting together for a couple of meetings and kind of um, Wendy and, and Vincent are also moving tapestry down the field and uh, Wendy Alford's got some ideas. She's kind of trying to help fold into all of that. And so that's, that's, uh, that's cool stuff is going on there. Um, and, and I think it, we've had a smaller work team working on that. Um, I, I think we'll start to see some of the kind of the output or the thinking from that come out in the next week or two, maybe two weeks. Yeah, I'd love to give an update on that. That'd be great at some point. Um, other check-in, quick check-in things, and then we can dive into a deeper dive on stuff. Just to do a quick a quick check-in on the on what intersects with the project knowledge graph. Uh, let's see. So this is the current state of affairs of the project Cataport. So basically, you can set up an Airtable database. You could name the fields what you want. Um, so right now, I have pretty simple like project name, description, a URL, photo. Um, there's some required fields here, like a, a date field of when it was synced, uh, an object ID, um, and then a field for the curator, which is the ID of of the person in uh, Categora slash Trove. And I'll, maybe I'll just say quickly, I think we're changing the name to Categora. And so I will probably be using that name in, and <laughs> unless I otherwise uh, decide that that name isn't working. But um, yeah, committing to like starting to use that name and see how it feels. Um, and then basically, how this works is that there's a script in Airtable. Airtable has these two widgets. There's one called automations, which is like, if this, then that. So like, if someone edits a record, then do something else. And they also have uh, something called apps. Um, and the apps, you can go add an app and they have this scripting block, which lets you build code within Airtable. You can also use the automations in Airtable to run a script. So you can say, if someone updates a record, run a script. Or you know, if somebody, um, if a record is deleted, run a script. Um, so yeah, basically the code here is just mapping the fields. So it's saying the topics field in Categora is called topics. The um, title field is called name. We could change it to project name. It could be um, what this project is called. And then you would just kind of map the fields. And then there's also some additional like text fields that you can add, which can be, which don't have to necessarily map with this structure and it'll still sync. Um, and so yeah, you just set up the kind of uh, the, the table and the view that you want to sync. So you can like filter this table by like only the public projects and then run it on just that view. Um, and so when you click run, then it basically will, um, if the project is not created, it'll create it. And if it is already in the database, then it will update it and it will change the date here to be last synced like, you know, a second ago. And then um, I think I made a button here where you can view the project to make sure it worked. So I added a project here for Project Clambake and um, I tagged the group username flotilla and OGM. And so now it shows up in the flotilla um, project directory as well as the OGM project directory. Um, and then you could go and edit it on Categora or you can actually make updates here. Like we could remove flotilla or you can you know, um, edit any of the information here, hit run, and then it will basically overwrite um, the directory. So that's my quick update on the project importer, and that could definitely work, Pete, with the sort of graph database. You just add another table for the relationships between the projects. Yep. Um, the the IDs you're using, they're they're bubble or. Yep. And it looks like a Unix time, and then the 
letter and then another big number, which is. I can, can so write. the ID here, I can, oh man, it's doing, doing this weird thing where it's not letting me get back. I can share this database as well if that's easier, Pete. I'm going to yeah. put a link in the chat. Okay, here's the link. Thank you. And yeah, so the uh, how you ha have this set up, it's the ISO time, date, and time fields. And then this object ID, here's an example of the object ID. I think it's the, um, it always has an X in it. So it has like a probably app ID and then the object ID, I'm assuming. And that first number looks like Unix time off offhand. And then the hmm. second one maybe is date time or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, the world hasn't quite figured out time yet. We have the clocks changing. <laughs> yeah. And there was a Zulu time issue or in my office. Yeah. <laughs> um this the all this ID stuff, it, it'll all be in UTC. Um so yeah. Um this uh, equals this. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and all that is is uh, seconds since the epic, which is uh, January 1st, 1970, if I don't, if I don't forget. Yeah. Yeah, and it ends in 2038. Well, it, it rolls <laughs> it over. overflows. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's like exactly when it was created and then a random ID. And the other one's not random, right? It's uh, it, it may be a date stamp too or something. Oh, well, maybe it's random. Milliseconds or microseconds since the epic. Yeah, yeah the, that, that one is just seconds. It's not microseconds. Mm -hmm. Is there a minus for expressing previous to no. 1970? No, it's just some excerpt on the, you know, the universe is expanding. It's just some like, <laughs> well, just grab a distance and, you know, take some numbers out of it. <laughs> it's, um, it, it's like the system time that, it's, that a Unix system has. It's the clock uh, for Unix, basically. And so it's not meant to be, it, it wasn't meant to be a date interchange format, really. Um, it's just what, you know, your computer thinks is the, the current time. So the other weird thing is it, it's seconds, um, which back in 1975 or 1980 or whenever they decided to make that format, seconds seemed like a fine enough resolution. But nowadays everyone's like, oh my God, a whole second? I can stuff like, you know, a million events into a second. I don't know what you're talking about. But which <laughs> microsecond, right? Yeah, I had yeah, problems see, they... on the mainframe for cause of that. <laughs> Yeah, see, they never asked a dog, how long is a second? Oh, I got time. <laughs> so if you put all the Unix clocks on a rocket going towards the speed of light, they'll slow down and then we won't reach it. Yep. <laughs> but, but we'll be a billion years in the future, so it won't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, so thanks, Vincent. I'll play around with that and I'll play around with a graph database. Yeah, feel free to add other other tables if you'd like. Okay. <laughs> Herding cats, Michael. I'm just seeing this. 
<laughs> um, so that's different from like guarding the data. That's that's going to be like, all right, we need to get everyone together, right? <laughs> Well, with gardening, you have to build fences to keep out the rabbits and other pests. <laughs> that's no, that's great. I um, did I tell you about my um, aspirations to create a NFT project called Impact Cats? <laughs> that's a good one. There would be cats all with like each one right like has like a different uh persona so like there's an astronaut cat and that's like in the space industry the impact cat would be like the social justice warrior um and then if you buy it then you fund projects in that space actually star trek is uh, including cats in their shows now oh really yeah discovery that's one <laughs> So with this expanding universe, I saw something interesting that the stars that are like close to 13 billion years away, that light left 13 billion years ago, but that star is probably 39 billion years, uh, light years away from now because the expanding universe. So, uh, Wendy, do you want to share any updates on the tapestry? Yeah. Do you guys feel complete um, with the um, stuff you were talking about before? Because all that kind of went over my head. So I want to make sure you guys. Clean <laughs> enough for now. Yeah. All right. So I thought what I'd do um, uh, earlier this week, we shared the first um, kind of little prototype. I guess that was just Wednesday. Um, and then I did some updates in Figma. So what I'd like to do is show you guys Figma and maybe get some I, if if people are interested we could get a little conversation going around a couple of the questions that are a little bit different than your traditional um questionnaire kind of questions um it also gives you a sense of kind of how we're organizing things and just you know do we feel like we're missing questions um ultimately my goal is to create a prototype that is on the simpler side so i love if the conversation starts to cycle out, like that's totally fine. But then at the end, I'm gonna to wanna to go, okay, like what is the, what are the questions we can do a little more quickly if it seems like some of the questions are relatively complicated or getting at complicated information. <laughs> and Bill's, have, are you fighting off your dog? Like what? Trying not to pet him. Yeah. Xander's like, dude, I don't know what you're doing playing with those, that, that box thing, play yeah. with me. <laughs> I want him to basically just be on the floor next to me, but he's so I have to wait for him to like stop doing this and then give him a treat. It's like ignore <laughs> right, the you can't ignore, right, you can't give reinforcement for the bad behavior. Yeah, but in case I end up putting my hand on his head, he's like, genius, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, I'll share my screen. So first, I've learned that I love float, um, not flotilla. I love that too. <laughs> Figma, that I love Figma. Um, it's so close to Photoshop that I it took me maybe five minutes to figure out how to use it. So uh, Vince and I have been doing a lot of our, our layouts and stuff and, and Figma. Um, so this would be the open, um, opening little, little image um, just to orient people. And we'd been talking about making sure that people kind of are coming at answering the questions from the perspective of what we wanna contribute or what we wanna share or what sort of gifts we wanna to give to this community. Um, later, I see the tapestry being a, a potential for matchmaking of things, but I wasn't starting there. So we were starting with, it's just the contribution side. And um, from a lot of angles, people were liking that. Um, just starting there, what do you guys think about that? So we're not necessarily gonna be asking questions about sharing, and needing and contributing and requesting right it's it's just on the side of of what are you giving to your community does that any sense any thoughts about that right off the top um, starting somewhere is great and and keeping it simple is great so okay you can always make it more complicated later can always yeah um then a little profile thing pops up that um 
because I'm working with Vince, it's really nice, right? We can integrate with Trove if, and now Categora. So if um, people have their information in Categora, then it'll then it'll um, prefill, which is nice. And so I think Vincent and I are going to talk soon about is there any other information we might want to pull in from Categora and give people an opportunity to to maybe edit or change things if they know they're going to be sharing it with a particular community. And then I'm going to skip and go down here. And then I was thinking because of my conversations with Wendy Elford, it might actually be nice to just have a separate section that's just for my story and start. So, you know, one way to do the survey is to really start with categories and help help people frame their thinking. And another way to start is to go with just a story, like what would you like to contribute and kind of help them think about it a little bit with this, with the, with this section here. Um, and then just let them tell a story or brainstorm. So I just, if you would read that for a second and just tell me what you think of, right? You haven't really contributed anything else. And what is this, does this feel too open? Make it a bigger, sorry. So, oh, I have an idea. Um, can you put in the chat for me, like, like a phrase or a sentence of the kind of stuff that you would put in the open field? Like maybe, you know, 15 seconds of just typing something in and give me a sense of what your answer would be here. Um, that would be very cool. Wendy, you should type the question first real quick. You want me to type it into chat? Yeah. So then when we read the it's chat not really later. Phrased as a, oh, yeah, so that. Got just it. even just describe what you would like to contribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bill. Maybe just another minute. It looks like people are still typing. And if you didn't submit something, but you're not planning on submitting something, that's fine. Just like throw a finger up so that I know. So, hey, Bill, can I start with just asking you to say a little bit more about your response? Because I found that very interesting. You want to say why you're even interested in this community, which I think is a great, a great point. Well, I was just looking at this like, okay, so here, I 
so my question is, are we, which, which community are we talking about? Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a general, a more general question to somebody about framed in the context of some community. Yeah, I was, I should have clarified that I was imagining this coming as an invitation from a member of the community to the whole community, right? So whether it was a leader of a community or the administrator or a, right, they would be sending a, a communication out that said, we'd love to get to know more about our, about this community. So it would be from OGM or from Flotilla or from, from OFC or from, you know, and then saying, and we would love to learn more about you. So I think you would, you, in your mind, you'd already know that you were speaking to, a, to one particular community over another. Yeah, I still don't know how to answer questions like this. Yeah. I mean, I really don't, especially if I don't, I've, it's like a, on a community that I'm new to. Yeah. So I'm, I it, just- It could be a community that you're, um, Hey, Bill, how do you help out the massive wiki community? Um, right now, I'm trying to figure out how to work, how to get some <laughs> software running. I mean, literally. Yeah. And I, you know, I talk it up amongst people. I'm still trying to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I mean, this is the question. I'll just put this out here because I don't know. But I've been in a couple of other, not here, but other places where people say, oh, Oh, what's your pet? What's your superpower? I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> no, I'm just a human being. <laughs> yeah. There's that old Zen koan about some teacher, and he says, "Look, I'm just selling water by the river." <laughs> um, I, I I resonate with that. A lot of times, I I, so. I have kind of a similar reaction, uh, which is, let's let's start doing stuff together and find out. Yeah, because partially for me, it's like I'm each time I get involved with something, if I really, if it interests me, I'm going to actually learn something, yeah. some new piece about myself that I can actually put into practice or that I need to erase from my list of, you know, don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of like I could tell you what I've done in other projects, but this is a new project. So <laughs> we're going to find out together what I can do and how I can help. This could also I be an optional. Like it, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I did feel like this sort of calls for this sort of generalist, like, you know, what are you, you know, you know, I answered it in this sort of generic bio way. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what about what I do is gonna be useful to who, you know, I was trying to do something, but like, I would probably have an easier time answering if I was answering like with bullet points or with, you know, like, or, or in a way, I mean, uh, maybe a question is um, how would you, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a story by Wendy's standards, but it might be useful in this case, um, how would you tag yourself? you know, where you're like kind of compelled to just put some descriptors, some of which might be like, you know, good listener and others of which might be very specifically, you know, conversant in X programming language. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that's helpful. It is, thank you. You're basically saying throw down some adjectives or something, right? Instead of trying to turn it into some story, right? If you felt like you could just go like th almost like listing skills or listing strengths or listing, you know, something you could frame it how you wanted to and just like write a couple of phrases here or instead of feeling like it needed to be some lengthy something and you're not even sure what you're trying to reference. Right, and whether whether your prose style matters or whether you know, I mean, it's it's just you know, are you trying to be funny? Are you trying to be like provocative? You know, you you sort of there are all these tonal questions in this, especially for something where you're not sure what it 
what it is or what it's going to be used for somewhat be mitigated by saying give us a bunch of adjectives about yourself I, I mean I like your use of that term that's actually something I sometimes do like when I'm consulting on a project and I just say like give me a bunch of adjectives about this thing we're working on and now give me some adjectives about what you wish it were becoming or, or mm-hmm, will become. mm-hmm. and that like cuts so much cuts through a lot it. of conversation yeah 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 i like that as an option too i'm, I'm wondering too we could give i think I'm wondering what you guys feel of this concept. Is it possible that there, it's kind of two different ways to approach it, right? One, some people want to know the categories that they're going to be applying later to frame what they're going to say. And some people just want to say it and then frame it, put it into the categories later. And I'm wondering if we give people an option, you know, like, would you like to tell us a story about yourself or would you like to, would you like to, um, I don't know, we'd find someone, you know, categorize it sounds a little, would you like to see the categories that we're going to be weaving, you know, and, and cause Vincent and I, every time we play with this, it's like, well, couldn't we just give them like the sectors first or the, you know, to help or the type, you know, like whether they're going to be doing an interest or an expertise, can we give that to them first? And then it keeps flipping in my mind, it keeps flipping back and forth to advantage. Maybe what we need to do is give people the option of both, but that's another option to choose between. And I don't know if that's just more friction than it's, than it's worth, but what do people think about that? Some people might want to give a story first and just tell people about themselves. And some people might want to go, oh no, if you tell me I need to give you interests, that helps me. If I just want to push back a little bit about the thing that we were just talking about being akin to like picking categories because to me that's sort of that that's very different it's like if you go in you say somebody you know throw out some adjectives in whatever whatever kind of adjectives you want it's Mm -hmm. more like a story if you say okay like here are the categories, check them off, you know, according to, that's a really much more training thing. So, so, I mean, I almost feel like in this opening, you can say, like, you can, you can string it together as a story, or just some adjectives with commas between them, whatever you like, or some mix of the two, Uh, you know, but, but I mean, keeping the freeformness because I assume with with um, with whatever you know Wendy's sentiment analysis whatever the process that works on the stories that pulls out key terms I, I don't even mm-hmm. know how how what what the process is and what the you know the NLP is but I assume that the key terms as opposed to the gerunds or the the linkages are what she looks for so stringing together the adjectives without them being a coherent prose might even work the same way from her point of view I don't know yeah yeah thank you for that clarification I actually didn't mean that I would want to turn the adjectives into some sort of way of categorizing. I actually thought your suggestion to put in a list of adjectives or something similar as, as a way to phrase it to people in this spot would improve this question a lot. And then I guess I was jumping ahead and saying for someone like Bill, who's like, it does maybe, or, or people like that who look at this part, list of adjectives or not, and go, this is not my kind of question. Like This does not work for me. Like, this is not the way I like to think about myself or describe myself. So what is it you're actually looking for who end up in that frame of mind that maybe they would prefer skipping this and going right into, you know, things where they can see how they're going to be categorizing things so that they feel like they're, you know, so I was just, we're going to end up doing both. We're going to end up asking people about a story and we're going to end up asking people to cat- you know, kind of synthesize it and categorize it a little bit. And, and I was wondering if maybe it was wise to give them the option up front and then they can do whichever they want to do first. It doesn't matter. So anyway, that's just, we can play around with it. And maybe that's something we can also A-B test as well. Um, 
So does anybody else have something they want else they want to say here before I move on? Because I'd love to show you a couple other questions. Vincent and I both. Yes, so please. I really, really like what Eric said about like, yeah, wanting to know um, what type of profile is it? And I think the power that we have here is that, um, you know, we get to design the tool to be able to afford whatever type of interactions we want to create. And like when you go on Facebook and they say like, you know, what's on your mind, that's like kind of guiding people to answer something in a very, you know, a certain way, right? Like a status update or something that you do like constantly. Um, for me, what I would like to see is, is more of like, a kind of combination between a now page where it's like a story about like someone's whole month of like what they're up to or like a project that they're working on that's just in an idea stage that it's not far enough along that they're gonna like create a project uh, and like, you know, put it out there in like a directory, but they also are not at the stage where it's just an idea they like have there's some energy around it and you want to be able to put it out there in the world so other people could find you and it doesn't feel like it's far enough along that you could like post on facebook because it's yeah like or linkedin where those platforms are kind of all about i mean at least for me it's like if i don't push something on linkedin that's like I feel like it needs to be polished to be on LinkedIn because like Eric said, you're like putting your best foot forward, like people are going to like look at that. And so um, the, yeah, the question about like, what do we want to actually see about each other, I think should determine what, how we actually design this, like what sort of, what are the ideal responses that we would want to see about a community that we're in. Um, that we don't have right now with the current tools. I think that's the question that for me would guide the design of the tapestry. And I'm imagining being able to kind of see, um, like when you first start the tapestry, almost some like, kind of like those like testimonial cards on a website where you can see what other people say about it. Like, and you can like, like click through them, except like you could see some people's responses. Like, hey, these are what other people have responded. And like, I would love to create, what are the like, you know, what are like three example responses that would be really incredible that would actually draw someone in to reach out to someone and actually collaborate. And, um, you know, going beyond the kind of like <laughs> stream of information and like in kind of group chats, um, but also not as detailed as like a project listing. Um, somewhere in the middle is where I think the, I would like to, to see it go, but I'm curious what other people think. Um, I, I wanted to come back to your question, Wendy, and about whether, you know, maybe it's one or the other for a particular person and just let them choose. I think that makes sense. The, the, the thing that occurs to me um, is the way that I would want to solve this um, is it's similar to the way that I think about people using um, directories and um, uh, it, it, it makes me what I would like to see is the way that you answer a, a question like this um, or maybe even more of the questions is you get teamed up with um, a community member who has a bunch of context and you have a little bit of a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so in the same way that I recommend a human matchmaker for, for doing um, matchmaking using um, you know, a fancy database, um, it's kind of like you want a human profile helper. Um, so the profile helper would have more context than you do. You, you, um, people, people just do things better. I mean, we've gotten, maybe let me back up. We've gotten into this habit of saying, if I give you the instructions, you can fill out this form and you know what's going on, right? Um, or, or you're going to come into filling out this form with a couple guesses of what I want because you've seen forms like this before, right? So um, that, that whole self-service thing has, I feel like it's, it's poisoned the well kind of. Um, because it, it's like the worst possible way to use humans and humanity, 
you know um and and the way that you get magic the way that you get context um you can you can tell somebody you know read this for context or probably better hey watch this uh 90 second video uh, that kind of gives you some context but the way that you really get context of magic is by you know one or two or three people or sorry two two or three people together helping each other sense make through something right so that's kind of where i would go with that yeah i, I i'm hearing something similar in both what you and vincent just shared and that is um there's a richness in, and I guess it's what Wendy Elfer has been bringing up too, right? There's a there's a richness in understanding the context of which within which I'm answering a question, right? And I guess that's really where Bill was coming from too, right from right from the start. And I that I think that's, and you're saying if we if we try to put all that context inside of a technical flow of you know question and answer, it, you really still don't get there, right? And so we're losing something when we do that. And I'm thinking, right, I. It, how do we, I, I'm not looking to replace, I guess it, it's interesting, I hadn't thought about it this way, but my true intention is not to replace that interaction, it's actually to enable more of that interaction, yep. right, so that you and I maybe for, for the first time discover that we both really are working on something similar, now we can actually talk about it. So I'm, it makes me want to go back to thinking, okay, maybe this is getting too complicated. Maybe we need to simplify and really ask people what they're already willing to share. Like what's already top of mind, what's already easy and, 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 and right. And we could do that in so many different ways. And I, I always imagined it as people would be confused, right? They get to the to a certain degree. They do the best they could filling out the questionnaire. They get to the tapestry where they see how it all fits. They see how their piece fits and go, "Oh, I see what other people are doing," or "I see the framing of this better." Wait a minute, I want to go change this piece. I want to add another here. I think that's naturally going to happen, no matter how good we make a questionnaire, even if it's the best questionnaire we could have ever made. I think that's going to happen, um, and that's what I like about it weirdly enough i'm not because i'm not looking for one set of data then then we're never going to talk to you again i'm looking for it to be an entry point and i think that's different than a lot of questionnaires in the sense most questionnaires you collect the data and everyone moves on this is going to be this is really just a, an onboarding and it's not going to be perfect and it's going to be a little bit fuzzy and then you're going to get into it and hopefully your community comes back to this tapestry on a regular this tapestry is constantly being updated and so that's kind of what I was thinking in terms of how it could work. And that goes back to your point, Vincent, about putting some samples on there. I think that's a great idea. I think it would really help people if they could say, you know, over on the side, click some samples from other people. And of course we could pre-fill them at the beginning, right? Where they could, stuff could pop up. Oh, that's what they're talking about. <laughs> like, oh, I could, you know, and it would help spur me on to share similar things. Um, I think another way to 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 kind of help that process um, would be to have uh, instead of answers that get like burned into the into the tapestry, if the answers were something that got overlaid on the tapestry, and I could play around with them until they they feel like they fit, mm -hmm. and then I could say, oh, let's let's lock these in for a couple weeks. So, um, you know. So then the the filling out the form is kind of like, you know, here's here's some examples. Um, just go through this pretty quick and and write some stuff in quickly. Don't don't make it very dear. You know, just just hack it real quick, and then pre click preview. See what your stuff looks like on the the tapestry, and then click you know uh, edit again. Un unclick preview and go back and change it and and keep doing that until you feel like you've you've made it. You know. Um, yeah, I, so we had, let me just show you our, our review is going to be this, something similar to this. Oh, wait, I can't, oops, I need to zoom out. There we go. Where it was going to be a little bit like this, right? Where you get a chance to review what you've, of course, these are all re repeating just for, I think you, 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 you actually want to see it in, you're talking in about the in tapestry, the tapestry. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
are you, do you also thinking, cause I love that. Do you, do you also think that it would be useful if it was you and with everyone else's answers or just you, how you, you and are, everybody else's answers. Yeah, yeah. You get to see it all. Yeah. Here's, okay. here's me in context. And most people I think um, would actually like it if that's a view that only I can see. Right. Right. Um, okay. I've just made myself look really stupid. I hope that's not public. Right. You, you told me that it's, it's okay. I can make changes right. and nobody right. else sees them. I see them and I see how the tapestry is changing because of me. And then I can lock it in and make it public. Yeah. I, I think I, that's a great solution. I, I still don't want to get too far away from having pe two people do it together. Um, no, I think uh, that's an option too. And I think, you know, the, the things like having, having some, um, having some examples or the top of mind thing is, is kind of like saying, tell me the things that you've told somebody else in the past week or two, or, you know, what, what do you tell other people? It's, it's a way of kind of by proxy having the, the computer say, remember a time you were with another person. Right. So I, I think I, I'd like even better, let's get two people together and do it um rather than having a proxy for it the there's um people just do things differently when they're you know when they've they've I, like being with somebody else like turns on your community bit right as opposed to my um i'm all alone on at my desk thing yeah for me that would slow it down right like i would actually not do that Especially if I was new to the community or early. Why, with the community. why wouldn't she do it? I, for the same reason, I don't like talking to the bank teller and I'd rather just use an ATM. Like I, I, I've always been that way. Like I've always, it's not that I'm averse to having a conversation with somebody and for someone else. So I, I think the, I, I think the, the thing to do is to dig into that. Why wouldn't you do it? I am totally like you. Um, I will always take the self-checkout line at the grocery and I always, I'll always take an ATM instead of a bank teller, but that's a different kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something where the bank teller and, and the, the grocery checkout person are supposed to be robots they're not supposed to engage me and we're not supposed to have a conversation it's supposed to be a a rote um, interaction so i'm going to get faster better you know less uh, uh i i've got <laughs> um less problems with my empathy coming out um less problems with me feeling awkward about when they ask a question you know, am i going to answer you know when they ask it how how are you doing is a hard question for some people right um, because it's like, well, I would tell you, but then you don't want to know that you were just asking anyway, this is different. This is not any of those situations, right? It's not mm -hmm. a situation where I'm talking to a robot, helping me into the, in, into the community. I'm right. talking to a, um, I'm talking to an auntie who's going to help me, um, join this. Yeah, I, I, right. And I would have no trouble doing that. Right. Personally, I think if I was presented with a questionnaire and it said, would you rather talk to a part, you know, would you rather talk to somebody like it's, the, but that's, that's the wrong setup. Right. So what um, are you thinking then? Like, how would you get into a person? If, if you start with the questionnaire, maybe you're not thinking about starting with the questionnaire. I, I want to fully. Then, I, then I wouldn't start with the questionnaire. Right. Got In it. kind of the same way you said, Oh, sorry, Bill, we're, we're missing the context. I would have sat, sent out an invite that answered your questions mm -hmm. about, you know, the context of the community. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing, right? It's like, hey, you want to join the community? Um, it helps a lot if we can know who you are. Um, uh, could you, um, uh, whatever the digital equivalent of, um, uh, you know, he, here's, uh, here are, our community welcome wagon people, uh, could you set up a, a, a date to have tea and cookies with, you know, one of them pick, mm -hmm. take, take your choice. Right. Mm -hmm. However that mm -hmm. works, I don't like, but, but, you know, we want to get to know you as a community. Yeah. Yeah. Instead it definitely of, creates here's a, a questionnaire um, to fill out that you, that will go into our database. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it creates a completely different kind of connection. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe that's a way to do it. I, I also was thinking, if, if one of the, and it could be by community too, right? Like if the administrator of the community who sets this up, let's say, um, 
wants to run it that way, I could see that being one option, right? And then another option could be trying to set out. I'm just wondering how, if one of the goals for me, one of the goals of the tapestry was to try and help communities who don't have a lot of bandwidth through the administrators, right? And now the administrator needs to have a one-on-one conversation with each person in order to fill out the tapestry that would slow things down again as well although it would create a much richer so i don't i don't think that this is this is an opportunity Uh, one of the questions i always get with this is but but pete how do you scale that right and it's like you you don't want this is something that you scale in a community way you don't scale it through through you know leadership or admins or anything like that right um uh anybody in the community should be able to help you um, join the community gotcha. and maybe 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 not everybody but it's it's not something that is something that you want to s- s- do a role specialization for really um, yeah you're seeing it being an onboarding thing and anyone in the community can help onboard someone else did i d- is that yeah. a good summary okay yeah. yeah and and then it helps both ways right it's a bi-directional yes. kind of help thing where the community is as new people come into it um people who are are have been in the community longer can see their community with fresh eyes they can see you know what new people are thinking about they can see you know, it, it, it helps, it helps everything, right? It's a, it's a virtual. I circle. love it. Thank you. I'm, I'm seeing your vision now and that makes total sense. So I, I guess I was thinking of the initial pass, like the community, there's a community of core people and they get to answer this. Right. And then, yeah. and then, but from there on out, when you, when you're bringing new people in, oh yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, I feel like I've taken up a bunch of our time. Can I just show you one <laughs> other question though? Just because it was a very Wendy Elford now, question. Now that we've done uh, one question. <laughs> yeah, I will skip. <laughs> and beat um, it to death. The question was about like stage of co-creation, which doesn't mean a lot to anybody. And we got into a bit of a discussion about it a couple of days ago. So instead I ended up framing it this way. And I'm curious what people think of this one without any framing at all. <laughs> And this dot in the middle would be something you could drag, you know, to move and it would answer the question differently depending on how you move it around. I wonder if you can expand the, the prompt question just a little bit because it's, it's got a couple generics in it. My, my interest in what? And well, it would new, be the interest ideas. you already outlined. Yeah, that's true. The context of this would be, let's say you said you had an interest in software development. Right. Okay, and then in the evolution of new ideas around in in this community, in other communities. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not clear. But is, is it easy to to kind of just ask? So make up an answer you in your head to those, if you would. <laughs> like, okay. give it your own context, and then and then let's see if if you know this this even become an interesting kind of question to answer? Is it just too confusing overall? See the example I picked, it's like right in the middle. It wouldn't move because Mm -hmm. um, the key framework is in fact helping people discover new things and assist with well, actually, I don't know. Maybe that could you expand I, I on think what it's, you, it's totally fine things? if it's if it's directly in the middle. I, that's a, mm-hmm. a, a that's completely an answer. useful answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, what you need is to make sure that you can you can not answer. So yeah, almost like a checkbox. This doesn't apply or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I guess the bottom two feel um, feel like they're in the way that they're worded a bit similar. Whereas, um, can you expand on the bottom right one? The bottom, this assist, this one? Yeah. You just need it bigger? No, I mean like this assist with oh. planning or making things for everyone's use. Like, how is that different from being a key, f- something that's, I guess, a key framework? Yeah, I mean, just verbally talking about it, right? You can have a key framework that's literally something no one's actually tried using yet, right? 
It could be something that's, it could be a new concept, a new formula, a new that hasn't really been applied at all, right? And still just emerging. Or it could be something that's been applied so often, it's pretty well validated. Everyone's got a good sense of it, right? And so, or it could be, have not formed at all as a key framework or system and just be existing as a, it's like not a framework, it's not really a system, it's really just a thing, like it's an app, you know, or it's a module or it's a, um, it's a um, website, right? It's what I wouldn't necessarily, it's a framework or a system in and of itself. I, I think I would, the, the qualities, I think I would make them a lot shorter and I would make them more, more that I would bring out the, the main concept of what it, what it is. Mm -hmm. the, when it, when it gets to be a, a sentence, you kind of want mm -hmm. a, a, a qualitative sentence or paragraph answer, right? So like the bottom left one looks like innovation or something. Um, yeah. uh, and then the bottom right one is like, uh helps everyone and then the top one is you know um solution key key solution or something mm -hmm. okay cool thank you any other thoughts thanks i think it's just fun to play this is one of wendy elford's kinds of questions and so i was trying to play around with I've yep, never, yep. I've never played around with trying to come up with <laughs> what the parts are for this type of response. Um, and I know she's even said it's an art, it's a little bit of an art form to frame it and to, and to write it properly. I just thought I'd play with it a bit on my own. Um, so thank I, you. I think I'll it's cool here. that you did. Thanks. Yeah, those sort of things. And I think, yeah, Wendy was saying those sort of questions where you have to move the thing, it just kind of makes you think. Um, mm -hmm. But if it makes you think too much to the point where you're like, uh, that, yeah, yes, then, you right. want to think, but not like think so much that you're like, halt yeah. It. yeah, you're overwhelmed and you stop. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, cool. Yeah. I, um, I'm curious and and hi Grace, glad you joined hi, us. Grace. Um, when do you think it would be helpful if I shared the uh, the graph, the chart view that I just uh, actually got working in the live version, um, so that way people could play with kind of where one potential output of the information. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, I also just want to check in with people since we've I've taken a lot of time on tapestry to see if there's other things um, that people want to talk about. Um, I also wanted to just mention potentially what Guillen and Geary are working on too, and to see if that's a good topic um, for another flotilla that maybe we invite them to come and talk because they're working on something pretty big that I think could integrate with a lot of things we've been talking about. So. Um, I just want to bring that up as a potential too. I'd, I'd like to wrap in around the bottom of the hour, not a hard stop, but uh, so, and and then I don't know of anything else to talk about. It's it's cool to keep going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I would just want five minutes or so to talk about maybe 10 to talk about Gann and Gary, um, what they're working on. So um, you want to show the, the tapestry, Vincent, that would be awesome. Yeah, we'll keep that to under. Share a little bit about what I'm working on if people want to hear. That'd be great. So cool. How about since we're on the tapestry thread right now, how about I weave that together in five? Then we'll pass it to Grace for five, and then Wendy you could talk about Gears project. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Cool. So, so yeah, basically started just kind of playing around with some different ways of visualizing the responses, like the contributions that will go onto the tapestry. Um, I found this uh, yeah, plugin where you can kind of uh, make heat maps. So you can visualize like how many responses are in each quadrant. Um, and right now there's like just one response in each quadrant here. So they look all to be the same color, but I'll show you what it looks like if you have a lot more responses. That's where it kind of gets a little bit juicy. Um, so yeah, in this case, like this 
this area has six, and these have one and two, so it actually will make the areas where there's more responses uh, darker colors and the ones where there's less responses lighter color. And so um, basically when you click on, so yeah, the two axes is the same as the, these are the sectors like software, sense making, art, media, and then on the bottom, these are the stages. Um, there's also a, a section for unassigned, so you can see the ones, so you can click on kind of um, each cell and it'll show the, um, the response and then it'll also show a link to the person's profile. Um, and then in the case where there's more than one response, it'll show multiple responses um, that are, so like, you know, there's two responses that are in design that are in the kind of stage two, like just starting to explore. Um, and so if you click on one of those, then it will open up, you know, that the specific one. Um, and for ones where it's um, unassigned, I haven't figured out like what's the best way to, yeah, to actually visualize those. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the kind of visualization that I was playing around with. I'll paste the link if anyone wants to explore. All you have to do is um, when you uh, go here, just click anywhere in the, the black area and it'll close this pop up. And then the view is this um, little chart right here. Heat maps, cool. Yeah, I think one of the things about like visualizing the information is that once you get more than a few answers in a cell, over, visually it gets very overwhelming to like actually be able to show all them. And so I think this would be just a good like high level view to be able to then zoom in to like a specific cell, see the 20 responses in that cell and then really kind of dive into the individual stories. So yeah, I don't. I, I know. Um, I don't know. Do we want to take a few minutes to to play with the the heat map? I think we just finished that prototype. So um, any feedback would be um, appreciated to kind of make a next iteration. But yeah, I think once we have some actual store more stories in, then that that heat map view I think will be a it, better. It's kind of when you're doing the design. It's interesting because it's like you kind of have to keep building different versions for the scale of the information as it increases. So this one is kind of not as useful when there's not a lot of responses, I would say, mm. is kind of what I've realized. I was just clicking on the tapestry link and, you know, the, the onboarding process, right? And I was thinking how unusual it is like what an unusual way to collect data um versus the way that data is collected right now and and boy it really is it's an onerous process so for example even just something like can we import your linkedin data and have you highlight some words would be a lot easier than tell us what you're interested in and what you're good at. Like I've got all that on my LinkedIn profile, right? So I, I get the move away from things that collect information on me without my knowing towards things that I get to say what I want to say about myself. But it feels like uh, it's like saying, well, you know, we don't like whatever it is like we're just going to go back to knitting our own clothing because we don't like importing all this stuff from China and I'm not really for that like I don't think that as whatever it is decentralized web three people whatever you want to call yourself like people who are trying to break out of the current system 
that we should throw out the really intelligent things that we've got that are much better at understanding what we want and what we're interested in than like me trying to remember what it is that I wanted to say. And I also feel like the prompts are a little bit weak. Like it might be fun to have a manual data collection process, but with kind of periodic prompts, like, have you seen this movie or, you know, and what did you think of it? You know, or like, just tell us one short story about what, I, like the prompt of like, what would you like to be interested in? I just like, I just want to die when people ask me that. Like one more, pierce, well, I'm like one more system telling you, what would you like to contribute to the network? I'm like, hey, you know, it's like my career is pretty long, man. Parenting advice is on the list too. Now that I think of it, it like, ah. Uh, you know, maybe the prompts need to be more, I don't know, fun, fun. I want fun. <laughs> you came to the right or wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Any suggestions on how to do that? Even to make it more simple, fun? like what were the last three things somebody asked you to do for free? That's a pretty good indicator of what I can contribute. You know, like just think, what are you trying to get at? And then ask a more specific question. When was the last some time somebody thanked you for something you didn't even know that you had done? Just get what are the last three things you got paid for? And what are the <laughs> sure. But but yeah, exactly. What was the last three things you got paid a lot for? Yeah, I, think I don't like that about. last one at all. <laughs> Maybe no, you're not no, getting no. paid enough. No, I don't like it because it, it, it makes the separation between who you are at your core and what you do for money. And hopefully, we're getting to a place, sorry, where those two it's, things are not separate. It's, it's a good question to to make optional. I definitely agree. Um, but uh, uh, I I do some. Uh, what are the last things you you did for money that you got, that you also enjoy or something like that? Maybe. I did <laughs> like the free question though. It, it would also be really interesting to have a list of you know pick a pick a question that you feel like answering right now. And that's also more information getting out of the person, yeah. like which thing are they interested yeah. in answering? Answer a few of these questions and then it's yeah, a one question. Yeah, like please answer one of these questions every time you log in so that you know the system gets to know yeah. you better and then you'll see in what order people pick questions. I I like the idea of sort of a a uh, you know word cloud like um, bunch of bubbles in you know of questions that when you hover over them they zoom forward and you can answer whichever ones you want and it's just a little game to see which of these things strike your fancy and you can answer more later i mean i'm not saying this the whole process should be like this but that would be a good gamified way to 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 play this where you could come back and do more and and make it more fun. Cats or dogs, why? <laughs> yeah, I like that idea of being able to add like lots of different, lots of different questions. And um, yeah, Grace, I think so one of the, the context of the the tapestry is like within a community or across multiple communities, being able to have these kind of responses that um, can be visible to people in lots of different communities. So when you go in to a group for the first time, you can kind of see like, you know, where everyone is in a, a different kind of map than geographical map, but a map of the kind of stories in a way that's not just like scrolling through a feed of posts, but that something that you can constantly be like building on top of. Um, and so, um, and yeah, and we're working on building it to be integrated with um, Categora, previously Trove, so you can 
um, I think if you're logged in, it'll pull information from your, your profile. So um, you don't have to kind of constantly fill out a lot of those main, main questions. So that's just like two pieces of, of context there. And Wendy, yeah, yeah, I think you had something you wanted to add. Yeah, I was just going to wrap because so I just want to say thank you everybody for your for your feedback and for your thoughts They keep weaving their way into other iterations and and I'm kind of going back to the beginning of all this, which is I want it. To, I love all the ideas that came up. I even I want to acknowledge to Eric, you put a ton. You didn't say anything, you didn't voice things, but you put so, tons of stuff in chat. And I loved that, too. And Stacy, a couple comments in chat as well. I tried to grab everything. Um, so thank you, everyone, for your comments, both voiced and typed. Um, and we'll keep working on it. You know, in the end, I think oh, I'm starting to separate in my mind, like, here's the here's the vision of what I'd love it to be one day. And then there's going to be the what what would be useful right out of the gate? Like, what would just be right? Because I think we're still hearing from communities. It would just be nice. I just want to know what projects people are working on. Like, can we just get that in one place? So there's a little bit of that, too, is just trying to get um, what's the lowest bar we can set that provides value and get that piece done on, on maybe a more quicker, on a quicker pace, and then keep working towards the vision of, cause I, gamification I think is, is essential for, you know, managing knowledge at this kind of level and doing the sense-making. I think some of us love it and that's why we're here having these conversations. And for some people, it's, it's just a lot and they're tired of doing it over and over and over again. And so I, that really resonated for me, Grace, what you were saying about that. Um, I don't want to have to fill out yet another form for yet another community either, or yet another profile. So um, how do we strike a balance in the short term and then shoot for a really good solution in the long term? Thank you, everyone. Michael, I see your hand raised. Um, yeah, I want to want to share something with the, with the caveat that I, I, I'm very conscious of the fact that I feel like, you know, a lot of the things we've said or, but make it more like this, do this, don't do that. Do, da, da, da. You know, it's like, you came in here with this, like, like pretty great prototype that you guys have done. And, and, and it's, you know, it's not, you, you've been, you've been enduring a lot of crossfire from different directions <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, it's great. So like, putting that aside, I wanted to say something else and didn't want to make it seem like at all directed at tapestry, but bringing up almost another question that I've been thinking about a lot mm. that speaks to Grace, what you were saying about, I already did all this in LinkedIn. There's, um, there's a, a kind of decentralization goal of individuals knowing everything that's known about them. Um, I'm, I'm not saying this is a general decentralization goal, but um, the, the idea that like what you've already filled out in LinkedIn, what you've already, what Google knows about you, what Facebook knows about you, what the credit reporting companies know about you, all the stuff, all the data that you've generated that you don't have access to, um, the idea that you could pull that into one place and that involves cooperation with a lot of non-cooperative entities right now. But, but if you think about just the idea that on, you know, a GDPR compliant um, level, you just have a little dashboard that shows you the info that you already have in your LinkedIn and, and exposed on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And if that could be pulled into one place as a profile, and then um, you edit that, you know, you edit that at, as, and, and, and are able to in a tapestry or, you know, uh, in, in a hopefully interoperable um, Categora, Factor, Massive Wiki, OGM, Hilo, whatever, whatever platform, that mother um, 
that mother profile information, that's something that is for you, that only you can see all of put together is something you can say, this is the stuff about me that I want to expose in this context. Like, I don't want to put all my professional stuff on this platform. This is more about my passion for, you know, parenting, you know, and, and I don't want to put my parenting stuff on this platform because this is more about like my cause related work around X. Um, and that sort of speaks to the thing that came up in one of our meetings that you all guys, I guess when we were talking about tapestry and Eric, you brought this up in chat, the idea that you gather a bunch of information about yourself that you can look at and you can learn from about yourself. And I was talking about how like in my years in the magazine business, um, the one surefire cover line was take our blah, blah, blah quiz and, you know, find out your da, da, da type, whatever it was. People love to learn about themselves. And if you could aggregate your information, add to it in it in a gradual way where a new question would pop up that could be as whimsical as cats or dogs, why, you know, vanilla or chocolate, um, whatever, um, that would be both fun and useful. And then the ability to choose how you want to expose yourself in different contexts would be yours. Anyway, end of thought, but um, I just want to. Yeah, just a quick comment. I think that was, that. That's useful over time, like to see how I was 15 years ago to today and how I've changed. And have I learned anything? I don't think so. <laughs> I would also say that it's a slightly naive view of what your data looks like and how interpretable what the computer thinks of, like what an AI program thinks of you is to an individual and the usefulness of an individual's data detached from the comparison of that data to other people's patterns. Like, like if you had to ask a computer, why did it show you a picture of that thing that you want? Like the, the answer is not a human understandable answer, but I, I agree conceptually with everything you're saying. And in particular, all the facial recognition data and the biometric, you know, like being able to know who's got that and retract that from that system that Eric posted, which made me go, oh my God, you know, but I know those are everywhere, right? Everywhere. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying, Grace. And it seems like the, the simple stuff, the, you know, for you pop quiz, you know, just getting my information together, being able to see what I look like, where is the gateway drug to really understanding like all the data and how it affects, you know, to be able to say, oh, this thing about this platform knowing the combination of my age and location and visits to X is determining that I'm getting these offers for this and I don't want that known and I don't want those offers and I want to filter those, you know, get, get deeper and, and, and also get to the point where um, data trusts, where um, people might um, fiduciarily, you know, delegate some of the responsibilities for their data around something to some trusted entity, um, you know, the way they do a financial advisor or a lawyer or a doctor um, would be in their power to do. Like, I don't understand this. I want to hire somebody who works for me to like manage my location data by some standards that, you know, that we agree to, um, that they're not working for anybody else, they're working for me. Hey, I'm just breaking in because I have a hard stop at 140, at 45 past the hour. And so I'd love to hear what Grace is up to and then do a quick, very quick, like, Yen Yuri, do you mind if we switch gears? 
All right, so for now, I'm just gonna do super, super quick what I'm up to. I just completed cohorts nine and 10 of my six week, the future ain't what it used to be workshop, which is the main reason why I didn't continue the money conversations with uh, the OGMs because I'm like, I'm busy too. But I do wanna do a series for OGM and whatever. And at the end of this, a bunch of people got very pushy about, you know, we, we don't want it to end. And we want you to create a community. And I'm like, I do not. It's not, <laughs> this is not a community. It's a workshop, you know, like you go to college, you meet some cool people and you, you know, you leave the campus. Um, but what I am going to do is to add them to the CSC uh, Mattermost. And there's a lot of the topics we talked about, there's overlap and I'm working on creating some kind of a campus. I just want to call it a campus where people can do workshops, um, hold events, I'm going to probably use, um, um, whatchamacallit, Vincent, you know, whatchamacallit, whatever that is, uh, where you walk around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Topia. Topia. And I'm actually thinking about moving all my meetings into there, like moving in a little office where I sit in my office and when the door is closed, like I'm in Topia, and then I come out to the coffee house and people can run other courses and other workshops and other stuff there. So kind of a co- stewarded campus um, and yeah and and putting my workshops also on a kind of a running basis where you can look at the do the curriculum at your own pace and then come every week to the weekly group and then sit at the table for the week that you're at or the table with the coolest people whichever you know you feel like nobody's gonna but anyway so yeah so that's what I'm really working on is trying to think about how to use these some tools to come together and maybe I'll just do a like a quick, like what I'm trying to avoid thing. I'm taking a Spanish uh, class right now. And um, this is my um, centralized location where I get all my information about my Spanish class. Well, not quite all, but let's just say, okay, here's the events that are listed for me uh, with, my, with, my, uh, with my language. And then this is the app that I'm supposed to download on my phone and do. And then this, oh, this is the other app that I'm supposed to download on my phone or click this link. Oh, it's not a clickable link. I have to copy and paste it. And then uh, here's some theoretical stuff like about like, oh, if I want to understand how language learning works. Oh, wait, there's a, another, uh, another link for another app that I'm supposed to uh, learn my stuff for. And then, oh, there's the 10 steps. These are actually related to the number two app. And these are the steps but I'm really only supposed to do under up to five, but not up to 10 until later. And then here's my plan. You can see uh, on some days I do the blue thing, on other days I do the dark blue thing and the light blue thing and the yellow, I don't know what they are. And then here, in case I don't know what they are, here they are all written out and I can check off the ones that I've done each day and they like update, I'm not up to week three, it's an empty toggle. And then, oh wait, there's one more thing. If I if I go here, then every time I do a lesson, I'm supposed to type it in here and then say how much percentage I understood at the beginning and how you can see how excited I am about filling out this form. Um, <laughs> and just um, in case that wasn't enough, there's another document, which this is where my teacher for each session writes down everything that we've been talking about. And as you can see, none of this has how I paid my receipts or any of that other stuff. And that's what I'm trying to avoid on my campus. So I'm looking for tools. <laughs> so you're saying you don't want to have a separate task manager, project manager, password manager, uh, <laughs> CRM, um, invoice software. <laughs> and then you have to have another software just to manage all those softwares. Yeah. And then as you could see by that, Thing, that was manually put together by somebody for each student he has to do that yeah right like it's not like my program is copied to the next student so I'm just that's just an idea of what I'm trying to avoid and why I thought flotilla might be a good place for me to hang out a little bit I'm so glad you came Grace for that particular example because um you know, Vincent knows and Grace knows, I sent out an email that just went, oh my God, we have to talk because 
Jonathan Sand, who both Vincent and I know, took your class, Grace, and I've, Jonathan's been working with me. I've been working with Jonathan to um, work on some user interfaces. And on the side, he went, oh, yeah, I'm taking this class, but I didn't know it was yours. And so it it was it was <laughs> by circumstance, really, that he and I in a conversation, oh, wait, no, you're talking about great. I know Grace. <laughs> like It was one of those. And so it's just funny. So. Um, and I think he was one of the ones really asking for asking for a community to last afterwards. Um, and as the way he phrased it to me, I know I felt the same way when I graduated from from one of my year long courses and lots of people, they did summits once a year for years, trying to draw the community back together because we were the inaugural class and the classes kept growing, you know, and the, and the alumni kept growing from this program and there was no, we were all applying research in new ways and there was no way for us to share what those new ways were that we were applying the research. And there was no way to cross pollinate and there was no way to synthesize and there was no I mean unless people made individual relationships and followed through on them and that was not happening so much. We tried the group tried all sorts of different ways to do that and it just kept falling apart it's just too much time. So I bring all that knowledge forward too of my own experience and wanting to create a space where people can do that knowledge repository, knowledge sharing. And I'm hearing it repeat now in your story and I'm hearing it repeat in some of the other people that Vincent and I have been talking to. And so I'm, that's what made me wanna reach out to you too. And I'm glad you brought it back to this, to, to Flotilla. I think there's definitely some things that could be done. Would it get to one unified thing? That is for the discussion. But in my mind, I see a flow emerging that is starting to repeat itself of the people who do the teaching need to just do the teaching, you know, and then when the community emerges from that teaching, they need a place to then almost separate from the teaching, but woven back into the teaching when possible, then they need a place to share and collaborate and discuss more um, and take the learnings even further. Um, and then there maybe is, is, is other connected universes as well in terms of that. But I see, I'm seeing a need for that and I'm really glad you're bringing it up. Thank you. There also need to be a couple of other flows. One of the flows that's interesting, like they're like, Grace, you create this great community in this safe space. And I'm like, yeah, but it's heavy handed. Right at the end of the facilitation, then I want us to be equal in terms of what we have to contribute and teach to one another. During the facilitation, I don't want us to be equal. You guys, yeah, yeah. you know, you sit down in your chairs and behave, right? And you don't <laughs> want that either. You want someone to create the space in which something happens. And so there is that, like, that's a flow that's important. Who's Very facilitating so. when? And Vincent knows what happens. We were in, like, I totally screwed that up the first day I spent with Vincent, right? Like, you, you need to have that understanding. Who's in charge right now? And then the second flow is the money thing, which is I'm, I'm really interested in. I'm not interested in money, but I happen to teach in that, right? That's the realm in which I teach. And so I want to create a transparency around the compensation of the facilitation and the back end and all that stuff as kind of an experiment in how do we create a transparency that would allow the community to understand if they are uh, appropriately supporting their steward, their Jerry, for the sake of argument, right? Like, is the Jerry of the group getting, you know, being taken care of by the group? Because that's what happens to these groups is like they fall apart because the, the person who's putting in all the all the time is like <laughs> burnt out. And so, that's part of the, the, the like, like I was saying, the invoicing, it's not just the invoicing, it's understanding the flow of the money and are we caring for our leader? And there is this kind of like, you know, there's a weird, there's a weird relationship with that, right? Like they're the, they're the person in charge, they're like my mom. I don't pay my mom, you know. I used to co-facilitate with the guy and we were really, really good friends and it would always show up that people would be kind of treating us like parents you know, in some kind of like, there, you know, like it was in the background, they didn't know they were doing it, but, but, you know, and then, and then you're like, you mean I got to pay? You're like, you know, Grace is okay. She's doing fine. Right? So there's an acknowledge a need for a flow that, that feeds back to the people who are curating the space or administering the space or facilitating the space or how, whatever word we want to use 
to, to acknowledge the, that the weaving and the glue and the underpinnings and the all the things that are going and making the community possible for everyone else to benefit from, that there's somehow an acknowledgement or compensation or something fed back to that person. Is that what I hear? I don't know if Jerry's burnt out. That's what I'm saying. Right? I don't know how, like, I do know for Pete, but I don't know how Jerry makes a living, right? And I don't know when he's going to be like, fuck this OGM thing and Jerry's mind thing. And I'm sick of it. And I can't, you know, like I'm working, you know, 60 hours a week and then volunteering 20 hours. I don't know that. Right. That's what I'm talking about. It's not just acknowledgement. It's like, we should care for our steward. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Grace. I'm, I've been hoping to put together like a generic flow. And so I'll show it to you and to this group too, when I have, that's definitely something that's next for me. I started working on it, but it's too, I showed it to Vince and it's too complicated. So <laughs> I've got to simplify it a bit and, and create it more like a flow. Um, and I definitely want to follow up on a, on a further discussion. Cause one of the other piece that my friend Michael brings in is for those people who want to take a real deep dive in discussing an aspect of something and they want to build a community discussion or something around an aspect of and try and see if something new emerges from that. That's different than I'm the teacher, you're the learner course, right? And so he, that's what he does. He does facilitated conversations and is um, and want and and does them around topics. So whether it's governance or technology or economics and his his personal passion is for economics. So he'd love to have a group that did a deeper dive around economics. That's the practical side. But then it's also recognizing that in the flow of things, we need both. We need the, I have something that's already been thought through and I want to teach it to you person who wants to learn. Then there's a space community where we can share and collaborate a bit and, the, and provide opportunities and synergies. And then there's, ooh, we've got something juicy here we want to talk about with much more depth with people who are ready to go to that deeper level. And I see those as three different things. And that's why I got excited going, you all are trying to do the same thing, just from slightly different angles. And there could be a lot of synergy there in providing uh, community engagement across, across the board. And then there's another thing, which is like, hey, take a look at my thing and please give me feedback, which I did this week and Kevin tore me apart. And I'm like, oh, I've got to start all over again. And, uh, but, you know, and that like, I'd like to facilitate, I'd like to invite a session where you guys help me, right, on this particular topic. Yeah, especially once you've gotten that group of people who you know are at the same level and coming from the same knowledge base. Or right. au contraire, people with different knowledge bases. Right. Or at least, you know, what you're asking and, you know, which are you asking people from different disciplines or similar disciplines? Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right. Do you feel complete in sharing that? I really appreciated hearing it before I, and then I'll jump in into the other, the Gian Geary project. Does that sound good? Does anybody else have anything they want to ask Grace before I switch gears? No, definitely excited to yeah, hear more, Grace. Um, one of the core kind of themes that we end up talking about a flotilla is interoperability. And so trying to, um, you know, there's never going to be one software or one tool that <laughs> rules them all. Um, and so the, you know, um, all of us here are working on different projects and um, you know, trying to build them in ways that we're maximizing the amount of interoperability, which in the end will um, you know, make it a lot better experience for both users, right? Reducing the amount of time filling out your profile 18 times, and also um, uh, the ability to kind of you know, switch different platforms and export your data and not be locked in. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're doing a lot, of, we do a lot of experiments and a lot of prototypes. So you kind of came into the middle of, of one of those. Um, so yeah, we'd love to, you know, if, if you have any ideas for like experiments that you might want to do, um, yeah, let us know. We could, you know, we usually uh, in the beginning kind of go through an agenda of like different things to talk about, so. Um, so um, I was part of, um, I'm, I'm 
met Geary originally last year um, in conversations with Ecolab. And then I didn't really see him much until last fall when I was in um, an inquiry cluster, technology inquiry cluster, um, which is a small group of people deep diving into conversation around how we want the world to be with new tech. Um, and so Gary was in that in that group, and so was Gien, who I'd not met before. He was new to me at that time. And um, Gien and Gary continued to work together, even though our conversations changed as uh, just uh, stopped as a group. And then we got together again as a group to kind of see where what what each other were working on. And so it was the first time I'd actually seen or heard about their work together. So Gien is a person who's um, very philosophical. I would I would say very spiritual, and has a real eye for um, understanding how technology can be used to advance human transformation and uh, community transformation into um, action, into some, some semblance of action um, for the betterment of the world. And Geary has been working on a platform that allows for the synthesis of knowledge and the um, dissemination of knowledge in and around, um, I, I, yeah, around, it, it kind of has a different structure. So the site is called Indie Lab. Um, they are looking to launch and they, their goals are huge. They're talking about billions of people to use this platform. Um, and so when I, when they demoed it, my first response was twofold. It was, oh my gosh, this is powerful. This is a lot of what I've been thinking and dreaming of as well. And I, um, a lot of people have told me I need to meet Gary because he was basically doing a lot of what I was, I've been thinking about. That's a lot of what we've talked about in these, in these meetings as well. And the other thing, so all that and everything that Yen was saying philosophically also very much aligned for me. And then um, the piece that seemed to be missing from my perspective was a little more of ease of use, um, user interface, user experience design, I thought um, could be improved a lot. My guess, I have not talked to them at any great length. It was just a quick presentation. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's Gien and it's a him and his, he also goes by James, I believe, and Wong, I believe is his last name. And then you have Gary and indie lab um and so i'm curious if other people know of connections to them if this makes sense to maybe have them come and to see how we can support their work how what might integrate what we could maybe i, I just seemed I, I just resonated for me as having potential impact and and connection so i wanted to bring it up So um, Jerry um, uses a, a something that connects to hypothesis, and it's a way of commenting on websites. And he gave me feedback on something I had written using that hypothesis, and it was pretty cool. Um, it's sort of like a word uh, comments where you could direct it to a piece of your text. So I haven't seen everything he's done. I just know it's all his work his ideas coded and um so i'm surprised to hear about billions of scope uh, i mean i'm not sure he how the scaling is working out uh, but uh it's worth uh learning about him maybe it, like he used to come to ogm so maybe if jerry could invite him to talk about his project for that might be a good idea to start we we could invite him to flotilla with them. I would love to see this demo that you were impressed with. Yeah, yeah, I would love for them to show it again. Um, who who should uh, invite them? Wendy, is that you or? I, I, know I can, reach, I can cool. surely reach out to them. Yeah, if that makes sense, we could have them come. Um, just give them the name and um, sorry, give them the time of week and see which week works for them best. Does that, does that yeah. make sense, Pete? Okay, and then I'll just, I'll let you know, Pete, um, if they pick a particular date, if they're interested in particular, pick a particular date. Um, it, it's me or Vincent, or both. Great. Um, That's easy. We, we could also pick another time if, um, if this, this, this time is probably it okay. But 
Yeah. Okay, then I'll let them know that too. Um, thank you. Um, then we By the way, the my... sorry, go ahead, Vincent. Then we should put that event on the Plex. <laughs> yes. Um, my, my new replacement for um, Doodle is, is when to meet. Um, it's working pretty well. And Doodle got way ugly. Doodle was already ugly. So that's a bit well, of an accomplishment. It was, <laughs> yeah. Wait, why are you sharing that, Pete? To um, set up separate meetings or something? No, I, I, sorry, telescoping, you know, made me think of this, made me think of that. Me, um, oh, okay. if if we end up having to schedule with Gary, I wanted to preempt. I hate Doodle so much at this point that I wanted to preemptively <laughs> strike at the heart of Doodle. Um, it got so bad they they started putting ads and stuff. They they got taken over by um, capitalist monsters. Uh, Sorry, no, no, no offense to capitalists or monsters, especially. Um, but but anyway, it got bad enough that I actually tweeted at some point. You know, okay, I, I screenshotted the, all the crappy ads they've got at the bottom, which was some from some horrible ad network, and I was like, really, this is you guys are proud of yourself with this. You know, it's bad when I have to complain and shame. That's because you haven't compared it to like the list that when you like open the I want to opt out. <laughs> in comparison to that it's something to be proud of <laughs> like we have room for all the logos yeah, <laughs> yeah. i have to run yeah um what do you guys say we wrap we're complete thanks all great call